for the basics class today, we are going to be starting down on the floor for about the first 10 minutes. We'll be loosening up our low back. We'll be doing some exercises for our lower admin to keep that low back strong and stable, and also some exercise for the hips and glutes, doing some bridge work to get those uh, hips open and glutes firing. So we we'll start with some gentle stretching. Lower back nice and slow. When you come onto your back, think about lifting up and kind of drawing your shoulders under you. You have a nice broad chest. Fix the screen just a bit. And then from there, you're going to have your knees bent and your feet flat on the ground. And we're going to start with a little opening for the hips with our windshield wiper stretch. So I'm going to walk my feet about hip width apart and then arms to the side, nice and slow. I'm going to bring my knees to one side of the body and then we'll bring them up and across to the other side of the body. Just loosening up. Between two and three times each direction. You're good. Even out each side. So you mean you have equal touches on one side to the other. And then from there, we're going to start to activate that lower midline neck. So I'm going to walk the feet in a little bit closer, but still about hip width apart. And when you're ready, you're going to think about keeping your hips on the ground and draw your belly button in towards your spine. So you feel your low back pushing into the floor. And we're going to start by just holding that. So if I were there in person, I would try to slide my hand underneath your low back and I would say, hold strong there. And then when you need, you just let the hips roll away, take a little pause. And then when you're ready, you activate that lower abdomen again, rolling the hips back. It's a very subtle movement. And you want to try to flatten that low back into the floor without holding your breath, ideally. Go ahead, head should be resting back. We'll relax out of that once again. And then when you're ready, you pull the belly button in towards the spine. I'm giggling because I see a big, nice, fluffy tail. And Riley's wagging up in the screen. It's like, oh, you're down on the floor. You must be here to play. Relax when you need. And then let's go about one more time, rolling those hips back gently. Feel that lower spine make contact. You should also feel like your abdomen is kind of pushing out like that bracing position. And then rest from there. Very nice. Take a little bit of a break with that activation with that double knee to chest, hugging the legs in towards the chest. Gently rocking your body side to side. So staying on your back, just a short little rest here. We're gonna make our way into our glute bridge practice next. So once you get a nice little release for that low back, you're gonna return the feet back to the ground. And now I'm gonna rest my hands gently on the front of my hips. From here, the movement starts similar to what we just did with that uh, activation. You're gonna roll the hips back, push that low back into the spine, but now I'm gonna push through my feet and start to raise the hips up off the ground. Driving the knees out so my feet are planted, my hips are raising up, we're creating that bridge position underneath the body, and then nice and slow, I'll bring myself back down to the floor. Hips make contact with the ground. Trying to push my knees out as I raise those hips up. Nothing to prove here, you just wanna slowly start to engage and then down and rest. Go about one or two more times. The higher you start to raise those hips, the more you wanna think about trying to squeeze your bum, push your knees wide and avoid any kind of pinching sensation. Common areas that will feel a pinching would be either the front of the hips as you raise up or sometimes into that lower spine. So it'll be our last one up and squeeze and then down and rest, beautiful. Ah, take a little break there. Return to that double knee to chest. That's going to include set one. And then we're going to go back to what we call those abdominal hollows of set two. All right. So the abdominal hollows, I don't think I ever identified that. That was the exercise we did where we rolled that low back into the floor. So we're going to return to that exercise. I'm going to give you an option to kind of upgrade the, the difficulty of it. So if you feel like you have that awareness, that low back pushing down, now you can start to raise one leg off the ground. The goal is to keep that contact with that lower spine, drawing the belly in, and I'm gonna raise the one leg up, and then I'll push that foot to the ground, and then raise my other foot up off the ground, kind of pulling my thigh towards my chest, all the while trying to hold that position of that lower spine. Anytime you need a break, rest, let the belly button roll away from the floor. And then before you start to raise those legs up again, roll the belly button back, 
Imagine that little whoopee cushion underneath your low back and you're trying to make sure that no air can be in that whoopee cushion. We're trying to push it down flat. It's about another 20 seconds of practice here. And it's very common to have that tendency to hold your breath as you're doing these abdominal exercises. So I'd like you to practice breathing while you brace. In through the nose, out through the mouth, holding contact with that lower spine. All right, when you're ready, take a little pause. And now we're gonna get ready for round two of our bridges. So feet are about hip width apart, hands either on the sides of the body with the palms down, or you can gently rest the fingertips on the front of the hips. As you're ready, similar to that abdominal, you're gonna draw it back and in, push that low back into the floor. And now we push through the feet and gently raise those hips up. See if your body wants to go a little bit higher on round two. Knees push wide and see if you can kind of find where your big toe is, meaning that you want to feel that big toe and try to push that big toe into the floor with the heels. Knees drive wide. You can breathe in as you lower the spine and the hips back down to the floor and then gently breathe out through the mouth as you raise everything up. As those hips start to get higher, focus on drawing that chin into the chest and lengthen through the low back. Give you one more time, about 10 seconds left, breathing out, gently raise up, avoiding any kind of that pinching sensation, and then gently lower down and pause. Beautiful. Ah, all right, we're gonna do it one more time, but let's do a little bit different stretch before we go into set three. Take your right leg, slide that heel out so that you extend that leg straight out on the ground. And then we're gonna interlace the hands. Take your left knee and draw that left knee in towards the chest. So we're actually pushing the right thigh down while you draw the left leg in. Rest the head back and now move through your ankle, rolling that ankle around five to 10 times each direction. Switch directions of that ankle roll when you're ready. Roll in the ankle the other way. And when you finish those ankle rolls, switching sides. So I'll place my left leg down, slide my right heel up and in, slide that left heel out. So I extend the left leg and then interlace the hands, draw the right knee towards the right shoulder. As you actively push that left leg down and now we'll move into those ankle circles. Circling around. Ah, get some pops and clicks through there, pretty common. And then we'll take it the other direction. Feels good. Wonderful. When you finish there, we'll return that foot back to the ground. Slide that left leg back up to meet. And we'll get ready for our final set of that uh, activation work of the lower core. So once you get the legs into position, as soon as you're ready, you can begin. So we're imagining we've got that whippy cushion. It's got its air back in it. Someone put it underneath that lower spine. So pull the belly in, hold that lower position flat. And then if you wanna practice the movement of the legs, we'll lift the one leg up and lower that leg down with that low back pushing in, breathing as you move, practicing that bracing of the body. Great exercise to close those eyes and just feel into your body. Avoid any kind of holding of your breath. Anytime you start to feel like I'm getting really tired in that lower spine or lower abdomen, just rest. Let the hips roll away from the uh, floor and then we'll draw them back in. We're gonna take about another 15 seconds here. One leg comes up, lower it all the way back and then we're switching sides. So looking to coordinate the legs as you hold that neutral position of that lower spine. Breathing continuously. And when you lower that side back down, go ahead and take a pause. <sighs> lower that. All we have left is one more minute of that bridge practice. So reset those feet right about hip width apart. And when you're ready, chin draws in towards the chest. Gently raise those hips up towards the sky, lengthening through that lower spine. And with each rep now, we want to see if we can get a little bit more of that back side of the body to squeeze and activate. 
So really try to imagine you're trying to squeeze that tush, wake up all those muscle fibers. Knees are driving out. Feel those heels push into the floor. And then we're still trying to give some love to that big toe, trying to push your big toe down at the same time. Wonderful, 30 seconds left. Lower the hips down, gently raise the hips up. Especially if you're prone to any kind of low back pain, this is an excellent series to do. Keep the big muscles of the back of the body strong and activating, and then keep that lower abdomen aware to hold that spine neutral. Last bridge, gently raise on up and gently lower on down. Fantastic. Ah, all right, from here, we'll do one more stretch for the low back. You need to return to the double knee to chest, or if you feel like you can go a little bit deeper into a twisting position, we're gonna hold the legs up and together with the arms to the side. I'm gonna go into what we call our two knee twist, gently bringing both legs across the body as I turn my head and look over the other shoulder. And just go as far as you feel comfortable here. And then when you're ready, we'll sweep the legs up and across and do the same thing on the other direction. So as I bring my legs to my right side, I'm gonna turn my head and look over that left shoulder. Right about one more time on each side. <sighs> Beautiful, balance out both sides. And then we're gonna stretch our quads before we come up to standing. So once you balance out both sides of that two knee twist, you're gonna roll over onto one side of the body. See if you can prop yourself up onto the elbow here, bringing your elbow just beneath your shoulder. Extend out both legs. And now you're gonna to look to grab the ankle of the top leg and you're trying to pull the heel towards the back of the body. See this from standing a lot of times? Obviously, it's going to require less balance, a little bit easier to get the foot when you're down here on the ground. You can also use a towel to wrap around that ankle if you can't quite grab that foot. When you're ready, release this leg, and then we're going to spin ourselves around and do the same thing on the opposite side. Good. Bring that elbow back underneath the shoulder. We tend to be too wide here, so make sure you walk that elbow in. And then we're gonna bend that top leg once again, pulling that heel towards the back of the body. Very nice. We'll hold another 15 seconds here. Breathing as you stretch. Take a couple more deep breaths to finish out stretching that side of your leg. Add anything else you need and that concludes your midline and stretching session for today.